Our dear viewers and listeners, we greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad. Welcome to today's Bible study where we go into the word of God and see what God has prepared for us before the foundations of the world. And this truth that is then revealed to us becomes ours and for our children's children. You see, the scripture says that the secret things belong to God. But the revealed things are for us and our children's children. Before we get into the word of God, I'm going to request you to invite someone to join us today. And let's open up this session with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Precious Lord, we thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the grace. Mm. Thank you for Jesus. Mm. Thank you for the love of God. Yes, Lord. Even as your word comes to us, it sheds the love of Christ in our hearts. Yes, Lord. Open our eyes to see Jesus, mm. to understand our purpose, mm. our responsibility mm. in the gospel, mm. that we may bring you praise, mm. glory, mm. honor, mm. and worship yes, Lord. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise be to God. Our text today is from the book of Romans, chapter 4, from verse 23 to verse 25. As Paul concludes this message of being justified by faith in Christ alone. Look at what he says. He says now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Who was delivered up because of our offenses. And was raised because of our justification. Praise be to God. Where are we coming from? For you to get this revelation, you need to understand what this is all about. Now, let me digress a bit and bring you to aspects. When Jesus was with his disciples on this earth, at a certain place in Philippi, he asked them a question. Who do men say that I am? And that was an important question. And they came back with various responses. He then asks them the question. Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter, Simon Peter, one of his disciples, says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And he says, Simon, and Jonah, 
flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But this has been revealed to you by my Father who is in heaven. Just from that statement alone, we see two sources of revelation. Flesh and blood and then revelation from God himself. And he goes on to say, based on this revelation, he gives him the promise. The promise upon which the church is built. The point I want to drive home is this. The revelation you have can come from either of these sources. If it is not from God, it is revelation from flesh and blood. But how I pray that today the Lord opens your eyes that what is revealed to you through the word of God will impact you, change you and transform your life for good. Back to the word of God. You see, the truth we understand from the word has an intention. It is to change the narrative of our lives. From within to without. And that is very critical. Now, here we see an account where Paul in chapter 4 paints the picture for us of Abraham and how he was justified. And he paints this picture going all the way to Genesis chapter 15 and verse 6. Where the Bible says Bible that when God took Abraham out, and showed him the sky and asked him to number the stars. And he said, so shall your household be. He makes him a promise. And the Bible says, and he believed God. And it was credited to him for righteousness. That faith that God based on to credit Abraham with his righteousness is what Paul is painting here. And he then goes on to show us that this was written for a purpose. This revelation was given not for Abraham's sake alone. God did not impute righteousness to Abraham just for Abraham's sake. He uses Abraham as an example that when he believed God, God credited him with righteousness. So now Paul comes back to us. So because many of us would read that and say, oh, that was wonderful. Because he has shown us that this righteousness that was imputed to him was not imputed to him because he kept the law. In chapter 4, we saw that this happened before the law was came into place. It didn't come to him because he was circumcised. So it was not by works. No, because he was circumcised many years after. He had 
this righteousness had been imputed to him. So now Paul gives us the conclusion. Paulo Nario Because many of us would sit back and say, Paul, that was a wonderful argument. You have now sorted out the lawgivers. But he says, no, this imputation was not for Abraham's sake alone. No, it was for our sake also. It was for you and I. To, to whom it shall be credited. When we believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. What is the point is driving here? It is threefold. Number one, that this is personal. In other words, what happened to Abraham? Paul expects us. Paul the Holy Spirit expects us to apply the same to our lives. Why? Because this was written. Paul, he gives us Abraham as our example. So that we learn from what has happened and apply the same to our individual lives. Why is that so? Because when you read this text, for instances, in three verses, he uses the pronoun our. He says, for our sake. And then he comes and says, Jesus, our Lord. And he says, our transgressions, our offenses. And then he winds up and says, our justification. Now, before it becomes our, it has to first become mine. So then after everyone has got their portion, then it becomes our. So before Jesus becomes our savior, he has to first become my Savior. Then collectively, we can then refer to him as our Savior. You see, Jesus taught the disciples to pray. And he said, when you pray, say, our Father, Chitafi. Referring to God the Father. Ngategeza katonda chitafi. And before he becomes our Father, kufuka chitafi. there has to be a personal aspect. He has to be your Father. Kufuka My Father. And how does that happen? John tells us in chapter 1 that he came to his own but his own did not receive it. But as many as received him to them he gave the power. The Greek word there is exousia to become the sons of God. And those are not born of the flesh. They are not born of the will of man. They are not born of the blood. They are born of God. And that is very important for you to understand. Because many times we get swallowed up into the community. But before he becomes our father, he first becomes my father. So this book that we're reading, the book of Romans, does not do us any good if we do not apply the same faith 
to ourselves. So we do not become a true son of Abraham according to what God has promised. And we saw that in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 7. Even Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 where he says if you be Abraham's seed. Say, if, if you be Christ is, then you are Abraham's seed. So this is an important promise for us. And why? Because he expects you to pick from Abraham's example and then plug in. Because God is the same. He has not changed. So the same approach has been using from the beginning of time. Concerning how sinners can be made righteous. It's still the same way. Is still the same approach that he is using now. And it doesn't change. All through the Old Testament. And if we do not understand this, because I've met a lot of people who disregard the Old Testament and then just focus on the books of the New Testament. And I often tell them you're missing out on some profound truth. Because there is what has been hidden and has now been revealed. And when you look at this in totality, then you are able to understand the New Testament properly. Because from of old, the same approach has been used by God. This is what it says in Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. He says, for whatever was written in the earlier times was written for our instruction so that through perseverance and the encouragement of scriptures we may have hope. So what is Paul trying to say? Paul He's trying to say this is relevant to you. It is written so that through it you are instructed. So the instruction is not from Matthew to Revelation. No. In another instance he says all scripture is God inspired. That is in 2 Timothy 3.16. Again, driving, when he talks about all scripture, at that time you didn't have the New Testament as you have it. No. So it goes all the way, all scripture. Look at what it says in 1 Corinthians 10.11. He says, now all these things happen to them, talking of the people of the Old Testament, as examples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. The point I want to drive before we go on is that Abraham is now portrayed as our example of how the unrighteous can be made righteous so that we can apply the same and the same God who is no respect of person 
when we place our faith in him will make us righteous will credit us with his righteousness and so look at what the scripture says so why Abraham because again Paul comes back to us in the book of Romans chapter 4 and he places Abraham as our example in verse 12 he says we must follow this is not optional this is not suggestive he says we must follow in the steps of faith of our father Abraham verse 16 of the same chapter and said we are to be of the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all and what is this because that's what, when we looked at it last week, we saw that Abraham, when God made the promise to him, at that point he was an idolater. He did not know God the way we know him now. But when God made this proposition to him. Abraham had a choice to make. His condition was dead. The condition of his wife was dead. And it is the same way with us. When we encounter God for the first time through his word. We are dead in our sins. So our condition is impossible. And he has Abraham had a choice to make. Could he look at his condition and say it's over, nothing can happen. Or would he believe God? And the Bible says, Bible in hope, musubi, when against hope, a wata subi likika, he believed. Yakiriza musubi. The, the other version says, contrary to hope, e, manti, a wata subi likika, in hope, he believed. So there was the first hope of his hopeless situation. And then there was the second hope of what God has promised. And the Bible says he believed that God was able to give life to the dead and call into existence that which did not exist. So, and that is the same thing with us. So Abraham believed God and in the same way he believed that God gives life to the dead. And that's what happens to every born again believer. We are born in our sin. Spiritually, we are dead people. According to Ephesians chapter 2, read all the way from verse 1 to verse 5. But what happens? God calls into existence that which did not exist. That is why he comes back to 2 Corinthians 5.17 and says, if any man be in Christ, there a new creation. All, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So what has happened? We who are unrighteous, 
Katonda with his righteousness. And that's what he says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. That he who knew no sin became sin so that through him we become the righteousness of God. And that's important because when we look at the new birth, when we say you are born again, you are born again of spirit. And God is spirit. So you are born again of God. Being born again is a life giving event. The life of God. The Zoe comes to us when we place our faith in God. And we saw last week that Abraham did not stagger at the promises of God. But what happened? He grew in strength, giving glory to God. So he didn't glorify his faith. No. He glorified God. And that strengthened him. And I want us to understand this for a fact. And the Bible says, we have this example because it is for us. It is to help us. And we saw last week as well that this faith has to be placed on three things. It has to be anchored in three things. One, the word of God in its totality. What God has said. And secondly, what he has promised. And three, what he is able to to perform. And in the same way with us, when it comes to salvation, when it comes to receiving life and receiving it more abundantly, it, we place our faith on God. What he has said in his word, we anchor everything in his promises. And then we rest in the fact that whatever he has promised, he is able to perform. And that's, you see, when we read the Bible, it's not full of stories. This story, what these accounts in the Bible are placed there as examples for us that describe the events as they happen. But also in there we find the prescription for life on how we can now reign in this life. And I don't want you to miss out on this fact. So Paul Paulo in the book of Romans, as we are closing, he comes back to tell us, to show us how Abraham was credited. And that is the Greek word logizomai. Now that is a word that means God imputes. He adds. Now I want to stress something. Here it is not God rewarding faith. No. Here God credits you because you have placed faith in Christ. So there, there, there is no the the concerning you meeting God's standard. But the only thing you do is place 
faith in Christ Jesus and his finished work on the cross. So what does faith do here? Faith is not what gives you righteous. No. Faith lays hold of Jesus Christ. So then Jesus Christ becomes the righteousness of God for us. So then by that faith, God's righteousness in Christ Jesus is applied to us. Praise be to Jesus. Yes, we have a it's like I give you an example. If a parent, it may not quite get it, but let's try to pick it from here. If a parent says to his son, if I find this room clean, I will take you out for ice cream. So the son wakes up, goes about his daily work. And the father comes around and he notices that this room is still unclean. So you, the father, ensure that the room is clean. And after you have cleaned the room, the son comes back. <laughs> He remembers, wait a minute, what was the instruction? If the room is clean, there is ice cream. But what has happened? He has not cleaned the room. So he doesn't meet the criteria. And here the son comes and says, Dad, I'm sorry. This is what happened. I did not do it. I fell short of the expectation. Forgive me. And he sits there knowing everything is done. There is no ice cream. And then the father says, the deal was that when the room is clean, there will be ice cream. So your apology is what links you to the promise. So based on the fact that you have apologized, I will take it. But now that the room is clean, you will have the ice cream. Ice cream has I, I know we cannot relate it, but the, what I want to drive home is that God credits righteousness to us apart from our works. So the righteousness that is of faith is God's righteousness that comes to us when we place our faith in Jesus Christ. And I want you to get that from the basic. So what is it that God is saying to us? God is saying to everyone that places their faith in Jesus Christ. He says, I will credit your faith as righteousness. What it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that your faith is righteous. No. It means that your faith connects you to God's righteousness. And faith in what? What is it that happened? What is it that connects to that righteousness? And that's what Paul wants us to understand. So what happened that when you now believe in 
then God credits you with his righteousness. What is it that God did? And this is what Paul gives us. He says, God delivered Jesus Christ to pay the penalty for our sins. God delivered Jesus Christ to pay the penalty for our sins. Look at what he says in verse 25. He says, he who was delivered over because of our transgressions. The other version says because of our offenses. He was delivered. So he did not deliver himself. <laughs> Someone delivered him. Over. God delivered him. So meaning it is God who delivered Jesus over to death. And this carries two senses. In a certain sense, Jesus. Yes voluntarily gave himself over to death. If you read John chapter 10 verse 18. But also in a certain sense, the father delivered the son. That is in Romans chapter 8 and verse 32. So what is it that I want here to understand? That Jesus did not just happen to be a situation of a good man in a bad moment. No. This was preordained. Look at what he says in Isaiah. Chapter 53. Verse 12. He says, his soul was delivered to death. And he was numbered among the transgressors. And he bore the sins of many. And who was delivered over because of their iniquities. Look at that. Verse 6 of Isaiah 53. Uh, this is the chapter of the suffering Messiah. He says the Lord, in verse 6, he says the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of our soul. So when the moment came in time, what God had predestined now happens in time. He lays upon Jesus the iniquity of our soul. Isaiah 53 verse 10. Look at what he says. He says, but the Lord, it pleased the Lord to crush him putting him to grief if he would render himself as a guilt offering he will see his offspring and he will prolong his days he will see his offspring in other words what will come of what has happened and he will prolong the days of the offspring and what is happening here he's trying to point to us who will be given eternal life when we place our faith in Christ Jesus. Because when we do that at that moment, we receive the life of God. And this is what 
Peter goes on to affirm. Ne Peter da chinyweza. Of Pentecost. Kuna kula Pentecost. When he delivered the first sermon. We are when did he so to the people who were wondering what had happened. Eli amali be unya ba no baba dechi. He says in 23. Agamba mu bidi a bidi musa. This man delivered over by the predetermined plan and knowledge of God. You nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. He says, God raised him up. <laughs> so what is happening here? He tries to paint the picture that yes, whereas all this was happening, in the physical, it was being orchestrated from the spiritual realm. The point I want you to understand is that God delivered Jesus over. Why? So that he pays the penalty for your sins. The second point he wants you to understand is that when he died, that was not the end. God raised Jesus up bodily. He was raised from the dead. Look at what he says in verse 24. He says, him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. Jesus is alive. He is risen. And that's exciting. Because when we talk about Christianity, then Christianity becomes a faith of resurrection. What was dead now receives life. We who were dead in sin. When we believe in what God has done, then the life of God brings life to our mortal bodies. So, look at what he says. And Paul was very emphatic about this. Because the resurrection of Jesus Christ is critical. This is what he says in 1 Corinthians 15, 17. And says, if Christ be not raised from the dead, then your faith is worthless. And you are still in your sins. In other words, the resurrection of Jesus is the proof that we have that the justice demands of God have been met. The resurrection of Christ is God's validation to us that our sins are forgiven. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the evidence that we have is the evidence that we hold on to that we are made righteous before a righteous God. Our sins have washed, been washed away. What has plagued our minds and souls for all eternity has now been sorted out. Hallelujah. And now, why is that so? He right. says in another portion of scripture. Romans chapter 1 verse 4. As Paul begins this whole message of salvation, he says concerning Jesus Christ, and he says he was declared as the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. So this resurrection message is a core foundational message of 
the church, of us, it is foundational to what we believe. It is foundational to our work in life. Here is where everything rests. Why? Because throughout the ages, great men have come and great men have gone. All of them are resting. There is none that is alive. Name them. All the wonderful men, all the people that felt were very important. Today we speak of them in passing. Even those that still exist, it is only a matter of time. We will speak about them in passing. But there is only one that has died and risen from the dead. When he meets John the Apostle, he says, Behold, it is I who was dead, but now alive forevermore. Jesus Christ is the risen Lord. And this resurrection has impact. He was delivered for our transgression. He was delivered up to death because of our sins. And now he is raised from the dead because of our justification. So this justification he achieved through death. In other words, God Katonda raises Jesus from the dead and puts the seal of approval upon him. And why do we get this? By raising him. And that is what guarantees our justification. So wherever you are, it doesn't matter. You could be in an impossible situation. And you say, how do I get out of this? Only believe. Believe in what God has done in Christ Jesus and it will be credited to you the same way it was credited to Abraham for righteousness. Why? Just at that moment, it doesn't take ages, it doesn't take years. The day you believe in Christ Jesus, believe that he is who the scriptures say he is, the savior of the world, who came and died for the sin of mankind, and was raised on the third day. When we place our faith in him, like like the scripture says, in Psalm 2, that moment, the, the Lord declares you. In that moment, he says, you are my son. In that moment, he says, you are my son. Today, I have begotten you. The day you say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ and surrender completely to him, he says today, I have begotten you. Not tomorrow. Not next year. Not when you do APCD. No. Today. Right now. In that moment. I have begotten you. And at that moment. The life of God. Becomes. Your life. But let's look at the upside. So you may be sitting and say, no, I don't want to do that. 
Look at what he says. Wete gereze vya gera. Bikura watume kumi na msava he satu muemu. He says he has appointed. Yasawo. And this is the reverse of the resurrection. Kati chino chi 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 has appointed a day. Katonda yasawo orunaku. God has fixed a day. Katonda atade orunaku kalenda ye. It is on his calendar. Alwa ude. It is set. It is not going to be postponed. Why? Because God has fixed it. It is like many of us, you want a wedding, so you fix the date when the wedding will happen. So even God, the Bible tells us, He has fixed a day. It will not be erased. You, you cannot say we will not have that day. Because God has fixed it. He has appointed it. And the Bible says in which He, God, will judge the world in righteousness. God is going to judge the world. There is a day when everything will be brought to account. And he's going to judge the world through a man. Not men. One man. And this man, God has already appointed. Katonda yamu kwa somulimu. So he is not changing his mind about it. And this man that God has appointed is his son. Why has he appointed him? He has appointed him to carry out judgment upon all flesh, upon all men. And what has he given us the proof? That he has appointed this man by raising him from the dead. Why? That is the evidence for you. And what does this mean? It means that there is going to be a final day of judgment. When all Bona the great and mighty, when all the sinners and the saints will be judged by Christ Jesus. And in that day, the Bible tells us what will happen. First Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 16 to 18, the Bible says, Concerning the saints, it says, The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the trump of God, and the voice of the archangel. And it says, And the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And there we shall be with the Lord forever. And Paul says, comfort your one another with these words. And that is comforting for all that place their faith in Christ. Because ultimately you will be with the Lord. But for anyone who rejects this truth, you will stand judgment. But all that can change today in this moment. When you place your faith in Christ Jesus and you join the family of believers where God has placed Abraham as our example and given us a write-up 
na tuwe cha wandikibwa that to him it was imputed ndio yo yena yekwa mu balibwa for faith for righteousness okubwa mutukirivu and the same will be imputed to you je chimuna we chijja kubalibwa when you believe wokiriza in god who raised christ from the dead katono ne azukiza kristo okubuja mbafu why because he was delivered for your transgression kubanga je yawe bwayo lwe bibibyu and was raised so that you may be justified so if you are watching us if you are listening to us you have never given your life to Jesus Christ today is your day of salvation i want to lead you Jagala kutukulembera as you give your life to Jesus Christ ngo wayo bulambu eri Yesu Kristo and allow him by his spirit to do what he promised to do a koleche yasubi zokola why don't you say this prayer damwe saleno say dear lord gamba ai mukama i am a sinner ndi muononyi i need a savior in my life neta agomu loko zimubulamu bwange father Chitange. you are the creator of the universe you are the justifier of men gwago bo musango ku bantu today Lero I long I want to be justified. Njagala ongobe ko musango kwange. Today I place my faith. Lero nte ko kukiriza kwange. In Jesus Christ. Mu Yesu Christ. Whom you delivered. Gwe wawayo to die for my sins. Afirire waforo bibiya. I believe. Mzikiriza that he died. Tiafa and he rose again from the dead. Lazukira mukuva babu my justified. Lord Jesus. Mukama Yesu. Today. Lero. I enthrone you. Nkunkunkunkunkuyimusa as my lord. Ngakamukama wa my savior. Ero muloko ziwa. Fill me with your spirit. Zijuza no moyo. And help me lord. Onyambe. To live. Ntambule. This life. Nubulambuno for you. Kulundwo. Amen. Amen. If you say this prayer. Woboze mwe sale. You have been wonderfully saved. Your sins are forgiven. And you are now kati the righteousness of God. Through Jesus Christ. For all of us that have been wonderfully saved. This is the wonderful message that we need to take to the ends of the earth. We serve a living savior. He lives in us. Alimufe. He wants to reveal his love. He wants to reveal his life to all humanity. Ayagalo kulago kwagala kweno bulambu eri abantu bodna. So let's take this message. Tutwale enjiri eno to the ends of the earth. Eri ensi mu nkomerero zazo. To show them tubalage that this justification. Ti okugobwa ko musango kuno is for their sex as well. Kwali kulwabwe napo it wasn't just an isolated event kino te chali cha abantu babalonde everyone in mind katonda yachikola kulwafe fenna and as we take this message natutwalenjiri yenu may god reach in this mukama abaomu confirming his word nganyweze ekigambo ki miracles signs and wonders nebya magero bonero nebye unyo from dominion church kuva mukanisa dominion we say god reach in this mukama abaomu kisa shalom Emirembe. Emirembe.